You can say what you want about some companies, but I have something to say about Primary Arms. Despite the fact I haven't given all of their optics that I have reviewed recently glowing reviews, they still want me to review their stuff. Some of their stuff has been flat out avoidable, such as their GLX 1 to 6 first focal plane. But they know that, which is why they took the price from like 6 700 down to like 4 and change. At that price point, it's a little bit more of a understandable price point for that optic. But truth be told, a lot of their stuff is just really frigging good. Whether it's their SLX Micro Prism 1X or their GLX 2X Prism or their Classic Series Pistol RDSs, they've just all been fantastic. Especially this guy. The 1 to 8 First Focal Plane PLXC. This thing, still to this day, impresses me every time I pick it up and I use it. I keep it on my shelf within arm's reach to remind me just how good some optics can be. This thing is basically perfect for what it is. It is a small, very lightweight first focal plane 1 to 8 that functions extremely well from 1x to 8x and everything in between. I bet you could find these for like $1,300, $1,400. And at that point, if you're looking for something like this, it's a no-brainer. Truth be told, 100% no-brainer. And people that have had NX8 Night Force 1 to 8s will say that this is actually better. Some even reckon it's better than the attacker, but take that for what it's worth. That was a little bit of a tangent we just went on there, but it's perfectly all right, because a lot of the things that we see on this can trace its lineage back to the PLXC. So we'll be looking at that again a little bit later. But for right now, what do we have? Well, we have the bottom budget basement primary arms second focal plane LPVO. But it's not just any second focal plane 1 to 6 LPVO from Primary Arms. Oh no, this is a brand new world for them. They are finally introducing super bright illumination. As far as I can tell, all the other emitters that they were running were just LEDs. But this is the first fiber dot, which can potentially be incredibly bright for the price point that this thing should come in at. I don't know the exact price, but expect it to be a little bit more than $300. Most of their SLX series second focal plane LPVO is around 300, but I reckon this is going to be a little bit higher, closer to like 350. And it's going to put it in really stiff competition with some other excellent LPVOs that we've looked at on this channel already. However, none of them have the illumination that this thing should potentially have. The typical box is standard primary arms. There's all the information we're going to need to know. Another thing that's going to be standoutish about this particular optic is the reticle. Gone is the standard ACSS, which you find on almost all of their other products and what they're really known for. And in is something that is very reminiscent of the P3TR reticle found in the Steiner P4XI, my personal favorite reticle. So very inexpensive, potentially very bright illumination and a reticle that for me gets, get, gets my blood flowing. And we are in for a real potential treat here, ladies and gentlemen. Under the foam, you'll see we have two manuals. I love that they illustrate achieving a clear reticle. Read this first in bright red, because a lot of people don't know how to properly adjust the eyepiece to their eye. As far as what you need to know with this, it's going to function just like every other second focal plane LPVO on the market. As far as the reticle itself, this is everything you're going to need to know. The most important bit is right here. The first mill drop is set up for 300 yards. The second, 400 500 and the fourth is going to be 600. The center is going to be 100. The half mil is going to be probably for 200, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Pretty self explanatory. 556 five, with 100 yard zero or 308 with a 50 yard zero. Nice to know. We get a cleaning cloth. We've got not one but two Allen keys. The battery is already inside the optic. You get primary arms is inexpensive but fairly decent and acceptable flip caps. But then here we are. Right off the bat, the weight on this feels about what they say it is. On the box, they claim 17.8 ounces. With the scope caps off, I'm getting 18.1. But that's within that, you know, 10-ish or so percent. I don't know if this is really calibrated well, so take it for what it's worth. The only other LPVO I have on hand is my Gen 2 Strike Eagle 1 to 8. As you can see, it comes in ever so slightly heavier. The 1 to 8 is not the one I would go for. If you're looking at the Strike Eagle, I'd look at the 1 to 6. But the 1 to 6 is currently being used on a test gun. So right around 18 ounces for a second focal plane 1 to 6. 
with a fiber dot illumination isn't terrible, especially for the price. Keep in mind, this is going to be around $300, $350. The next nearest optic you have to buy to get these sort of features is going to be, it's going to be the Delta Striker HD. It's going to be like the Sig Credo HX, the Sig Tango 6T second focal plane. And those are all going to be, you know, 700 plus dollars. So more than twice the price of this. So before you get up an arm saying, I don't want to buy a Chinese optic, guess what? It's still half the price of most of its competitors. And many people don't have the budget to buy seven, $800 optics. It's just the way it is. So for this thing to come in at the price point that it comes in at, if it can function even half as well as those other competitors, then that makes this a good deal. Starting at the back, we have a fast focus eyepiece, and this is the first key area where I have to bring in the PLXC for comparison. What is one thing you notice right off the bat? That's right. It is very streamlined back here. It is very thin walled. Look at the rear housing and the ocular adjustment. They are almost identical with the exception of the knurling. And of course the finish is going to be different because different materials take different finishes, well, differently. The PLXC is much more matte and beautiful, whereas the SLX is going to be a little bit more shiny. But like I had mentioned earlier, you're gonna see some DNA from the PLXC in this SLX. And it comes in the form of a very svelte, streamlined rear ocular adjustment. Adjustment on this is very smooth. All the way out, quarter turn in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is absolutely... Uh, I'm spitting like, like Daffy Duck. This is absolutely rock fucking solid. Listen to that. Good amount of resistance on this. And this is a little bit hard to grab which is great because you shouldn't have to adjust this all the time. Yeah, you might have to change it a little bit here and there, but just know that you can still turn it if you needed to, but it shouldn't turn unnecessarily. Fantastic. The next little bit of DNA we're going to see coming over from the PLXC is going to be in the throw lever, primarily because they are the exact same throw lever. $1,500, around $300. The throw lever on the PLXC served me very well my time using it, and I guarantee you, same thing is going to happen here on the SLX. It makes total sense that primary arms would go into their bag of tricks and pull out a part as simple as this to use across their entire lineup. As a result, you have a throw lever that's already built in that is removable in case you do break it. You can see you have a little double dovetail right there, two Allen keys, this will slide right off. You can turn it around, you can replace it, you can cut it, you can get a longer one, you can do whatever the hell you want with it. You are stuck, however, to having it be in just this one location. But you know what? It could be worse. It could not come with one at all. But at least the one that it comes with is excellent. 1x at 12 o'clock, 6x exactly at 6 o'clock, 180 degree throw. As you can see at 1x, it will be at 3 o'clock, sweeping up and over counterclockwise to 9 o'clock. So, for the vast majority of people out there, this will be out of the way in most cases. You can hear a little bit of the seal rubbing, but very, very minor. Really well damped. Good resistance on this. Again, you don't have to worry about this thing getting bumped unnecessarily. But the throw lever makes light work of adjusting this quickly and easily. As far as the splines that are on this, yeah, you can grab them but they are a little bit more rounded than I would personally like. But again, with the throw lever being there, you don't really need this to be too aggressive. On to the illumination control, and you can see we have a very simple rotary knob with one off position and 11 total brightness settings. But there's one thing I also don't like about this, and that is the cover is the exact same diameter and basically the same splineage as the knob itself. So if you're not careful, you come over here and, oh, look at that, this is already somewhat loose. You can remove this battery compartment very easily. Under the cap, you can see we have a very standard six prong spring, standard CR2032 battery in a non-captive base with our three little dimples for the negative terminal, and that is it. The cap does have a decent sized O-ring in the back corner, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about water egress getting in here. Now, if you're like me and you are worried about this coming undone in the field, at least you have a nice big old illumination knob you can get a good purchase on. Take a tool, I mean, yes, this is a Vortex tool, and let's see if this is at least a deep enough groove, which it is, to put really good pressure on there so this thing doesn't come undone. 
Usually, or at least what I've seen on the SLX and GLXs of the past, this groove is not deep enough and the tool just slides right out and gets damaged. In fact, you can see the damage caused on that edge right there. Or if you use a coin, whether a quarter or a token from, you know, the early 90s from an arcade, it would be too shallow and you'd go to tighten it or loosen it and it would come up and it would damage the lip. Not is the case on this. And let's listen and look at the incredible action on this illumination control. Very positive detent, very tight lockup. There is no wiggle or play there. That, my friends, is basically perfect for an inexpensive LPVO. Just to compare it to the PLXC, the sound is about the same, but honestly, I prefer the feel and the action on the SLX. This just sort of rolls into the next one. Whereas with the SLX, as you've just seen, really pops in there. Now, perhaps the biggest improvement to the scope is what's under the caps. No, this is not the SLX. This is the Strike Eagle again. And these are the old school turrets that you found on all subpar, should I say, mediocre and lower optics, whether it was an LPVO or a capped MPVO or HPVO. You have this little split ring on top, which is how you adjust your zero, and they usually sound and feel like garbage. The SLX improves on it dramatically. Very similar to what we saw with both the GLX and PLXC first focal plane LPVOs, we have these wonderful, wonderful 10 mils per rotation turrets, and you can see we can remove this cap with the three set screws on top. We have the exact same sort of erector housing that we saw on both the GLX and PLXCs, which means that I'm sure in the future or on another sub, sub model of the SLX, you'll have not just removable indices, but also perhaps fully exposed turrets like what we have on the PLX beside us. But for right now, they only offer this option for this particular scope, or at least this is how it was sent to me. But the real important question is, how do they sound and feel? They might be a little bit hot. They might be a little bit quiet for you to hear. There's a little bit of play. Ever so slight. But the detent is very sharp. So you can absolutely feel two, three, four, five. And here, one, two, three, four, five, exactly how many clicks that you're adjusting per click. The one thing I would like to see, they did include it, which is this nice little into see over here so this way you could line it up but it is a bit of a stretch they could almost have gone inside the threads over here with a little line but maybe that's just asking a little bit too much i mean even look at their windage they did the right thing which is one to the right and one to the left in fact these sound and feel a little bit better than the elevation Still a little bit of backlash, but nothing I'd be too alarmed about. And if you want to talk about attention to detail, make sure you don't mix up the elevation and the windage caps. Because as you can see, this says PA completely horizontal when fully locked in. And the elevation says PA facing to the back when fully locked in. The overall feel on this thing is one thing I haven't really talked about. And you know what? Again, for around a $300 plus LPVO, it feels better already than some of the, its rivals. I'm using the Strike Eagle Gen 2 as a really good example because this is a very popular LPVO. And yeah, you can probably find these for less money than this, especially with their cantilever mount. They usually go on sale for like three, 350. It's a very good deal, to be brutally honest, especially if you don't care about if it breaks or not, because guess what? It's a Vortex. They'll replace it no matter what. But Primary Arms also replace this no matter what. And the fact that this thing already looks as good as it does, feels as good as it does, and can potentially have some of the best illumination in the business for its price point. Well, what am I doing wasting all your time talking? Let's get behind it and see if it actually delivers the goods. There's no more beating around the bush. Let's finally see if this illumination holds up to par. 
We start at the minimum and work our way up. And already from one, you could already see that it's visible. At 11, it is nuclear bright. It is too bright. It is so bright that even if you're outdoors in the sunlight, you need to wear sunglasses or it will burn a hole in your fucking retina. It is incredible, incredible how bright they made the illumination on this thing. Pew, pew, pew. It truly is, I'd have to say, pew, pew. The brightest illumination I've ever gotten my hands on. Pew, pew. And this is coming from a $340 scope. In fact, online right now, they're saying it's going to be due in March, which is actually when I'm doing this editing. It's $339. So for $339, you're buying something that's already got the awesome feature set that it has physically, as well as this insane illumination. And don't worry, we'll be talking about the illumination much more throughout the rest of the video. But the illumination is only one part of how an optic performs. In fact, not even... Pew! All optics have illumination, so in this case, it's only pew, a small part of the optic overall. But so far, I can say it's very good. However, even at its minimum, it's going to be too bright to use with night vision, so if you're thinking about using this in conjunction with night vision, I'd look elsewhere. Pew, pew. Pew. Without getting into too much detail, so far down here in the garage, it looks like the rest of it is shaping up to be excellent. So, let's get into more detail. Pew, pew, pew. I am a big fan of second focal plane LPVOs, especially when they're 1 to 6 or lower in magnification, and I'm a huge fan of simple, easy to use reticles, as well as bright illumination. So this thing, so far, is shaping up to be everything I'd look for in an LPVO. And because it doesn't even weigh all that much, and it doesn't cost that much, and it feels really good in hand so far with all the controls, damn, 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 this thing might be a winner. Because it's second focal plane, the reticle is not going to change size when we increase or decrease the magnification. If you want to use those drops effectively, efficiently at what primary arms has them indicated for, you have to be at 6x. The reticle name is simply the ACSS Nova, and it's very wisely chosen for the supernova levels of brightness that the illumination is capable of performing at. This, ladies and gentlemen, is perhaps the brightest illumination I've gotten my hands on. And it's not like it's bright but horrible, it's bright but very focused and fine. I found that it's sharp basically at any time, any place, unless it's too bright for the environment that it's in. But guess what? That does tend to happen sometimes. It's that freaking bright. Gone are the split ring turrets that we've seen in a lot of the lower end cheaper LPVOs and other magnified optics. These turrets are a huge departure from that and really bring the entire experience level that much farther up. It really does feel like it's turrets that you find on a much more expensive optic. I want to fast forward through the tracking section. All you need to know is those turrets really make tracking this thing and adjusting it a breeze. I do wish that there was a little bit more of a mark in between where the threads are so you have a better lineup of where the turret is, where the marks are. It's a little bit hard to pick up at times, but as long as you listen and you count, you'll have no real problems. This thing tracks within about two tenths of a mil at 10 mils, so about 2%, which is about standard on most other manufacturers as far as what their runout is allowed on their turrets. As far as the backlash on this thing, there's almost none. So rest assured that at least from the factory out of the box, this thing tracks and holds up very well. To show all y'all just how serious I am about this, we're going to put it head to head with probably its main competitor, the Vortex PST Gen 2. These are both 1 to 6 second focal plane LPVOs that feature pretty simple reticles and pretty bright illumination. The PST might be a little bit older now, by a long shot considering the Nova is legitimately brand new and not even out for release yet, but it doesn't mean that the PST isn't still potentially the go-to LPVO under $500. It has been for a very long time and for very good reason. 
It's about half the price of the Razer HD Gen 2, whether it be the E or the non-E, but performs at about 80-85% of the capacity of that LPVO. Our first test between these two is going to be distortion. As we transverse these power lines at about 30 to 50 yards, you can see that both of them perform basically the same. At the very center of the image, they're basically perfect with no distortion, but towards the top of the image, you can see the power lines pull towards the end ever so slightly. So right off the bat, both of these are performing fairly similarly. One area where the PST is definitely lacking is now going to be in the illumination department. The batteries on both of these were brand new when I did the reviews on them, and you can very clearly see just how much brighter the Nova is over the PST. However, like I said earlier, illumination is only one part of the overall puzzle. And as we focus our attention on our 400 yard brick building, slowly bringing up the magnification to its maximum, I'd have to give the image to the PST. To my eye, the PST just has a little bit more natural looking image, but it's definitely not to discourage or discount the Nova image, because the Nova looks excellent as well, especially for the price point. But I have to give it to the PST. It just seems a little bit easier to get behind. Though we do have a little bit larger view looking through the PST ever so slightly, but we do have more scope body with it as well. Another area where the PST has an advantage over the Nova is with its off-center sharpness while looking through it. Focusing our attention at our 800 yard power tower here at 6x, shifting the camera side to side, the image is a little bit hard to pick up here at 6x, but the PST definitely has a sharper looking image when we look through it and we're slightly off center as opposed to the Nova. Trying to illustrate this without having your actual head and eye behind the scope to look through it yourself is a little bit challenging, but I try to make it live for you as much as possible. Bringing these both down to an indicated 3x, the PST has a much larger advantage here. The image stays sharp all the way up to the shadows where the Nova falls off well before the time we get there. Also note at the size of the image between these two. It looks like we're much farther zoomed in with the PST as opposed to the Nova, despite the fact they're both at an indicated 3x. I don't know which one's the culprit not being true to 3x, but I can say that the PST has a flatter looking image as opposed to the Nova, which you can see with that power pole right in front of us does have some bowing to it. So a couple of things to take note of. At least the illumination is visible on both of these well out into the shadows. Another win for second focal plane optics. Pulling back the magnification all the way to 1x and I'd have to say I still give it to the PST. It has a little bit more forgiving eye box behind it, and it really does maintain a sharper looking image all the way out to the point where you can't look through it. The Nova doesn't seem as bad here, but let me tell you, it makes a huge difference with the overall experience when you're using either of these. Let that not discourage you, ladies and gentlemen. The PST is a freak of nature and has been for many years. It's nice to see that it still continues to do so, but keep in mind that it's still gonna be more expensive than this Nova basically all the time. You can find the PST with their cantilever mount for about 500 bucks on sale, but this is 340 regular. I'm sure you'll find them for much less than that in the near future. The illumination is stupid on this thing, ladies and gentlemen. It is legitimately like looking at the end of a laser pointer at nighttime, which is something that you're not supposed to do. It will hurt your eyes if you are unprepared for it. So please be mindful of that. Primary arm should almost have a warning with this thing saying, if you're using this in low light environments, please do not go above like seven because going above seven to 11 can and will hurt your eyes. This does, however, let in a fair amount of light, despite the fact it's a cheap Chinese made LPVO at 6X in basically a super low light environment. But again, be mindful of that illumination when you're using it, because if you flip it the wrong way, you will hurt yourself. It is, however, majestic. I feel like a moth to flame every time I put it on. I just can't help but be drawn into it. It is truly superb. Back into the sunlight at our 50 yard range, we see that the back of the berm has a little bit more shift looking through it than what we saw earlier at our rooftop segment. I don't know why that is, but it really isn't that noticeable. There are some other LPVOs out there that have so much shift that it makes you nauseous every time you get behind it. With this, I didn't really feel that was the case. I felt pretty calm, cool, and collected as long as I had a good cheek weld. And that is the most important part to think about. Because if you don't have a good cheek weld, you are going to have some image problems like we already showcased against the PST. 
But if you have a perfect cheek weld behind this thing, it produces a incredible looking image with colors that are perfectly true to life, a reticle that is very easy to pick up, use, illumination that is very bright. Even here in perfect sunlight conditions, the illumination is incredible, on par with full on red dots, if not even surpassing some of them. It is such an incredible balance. I don't know how Primary Arms did it for so cheap, but to every other company out there watching, this is the way you do illumination. I don't care if you can only do it with your second focal plane options. Figure out a way of doing it like March does with their dual emitter, where they have illumination like this, a fiber dot on their second focal plane, with the reticles on their first focal plane. Yeah, it's going to be expensive, but holy crap, is it something to behold. It really is the best illumination for the price point, bar none. And the image, while perfectly centered behind this thing at 50 yards, even here at 6x, is sublime. I don't know how Primary Arms managed to do this thing for so cheap, but I can't wait to see what their next generation GLX and PLX stuff is going to look like. Yes, the off-center sharpness might be a little off on this thing, but the eye box is another story. The 1X is going to be typical for the higher end second focal plane LPVOs. The 1X, you can literally walk away from and still manage to look through it. And if you can't find the center, if the illumination is on, you can use the illumination to guide you back towards the middle, which is another reason why I'm in love with second focal plane one to six or less magnified LPVOs. And keep that in mind, because that's another thing that we're going to talk about at the end of this video. At 3x, you can start to see that the image will fall apart once you go slightly off center. And it starts doing this weird wave thing. I haven't really noticed that before. But the sharpness does fall off the second you go off center. Again, in a dynamic roll, that makes a big difference. At 6x, we have a fairly typical eye box. It's going to be a little tight, and the image is going to fall off a little bit. But that's to be expected on almost any sort of optic when you get to its maximum magnification. The illumination though is wonderful and really makes getting behind it a breeze. Let's roll in some more comparisons, shall we? And the first up is going to be with the SIG Tango MSR 1 to 6 and second focal plane. I raved about this optic when it first came out and it was in the high $200 price point with their alpha mount, which is a very good mount. But nowadays, the price on these SIGs is about the same price as with this Nova. So, something to take note of. Plus, if you already have a mount, it becomes kind of a moot point. Looking at these two then subjectively is going to be a matter of opinion for most things. Because it's going to depend on what you prefer from one versus the other. As good as the Nova is, the SIG is not that far behind when it comes to things like image quality. Here at 100 yards with the paper targets and that berm at about 180 or so, yeah, there's a bit of a difference. I think I'd still give it to the Nova, but it's not a huge difference. The biggest thing for this, in my opinion, is going to be 100% reticle, illumination, controls, and if you need a mount or not. If you need a mount, you don't care about super bright illumination, yeah, it might sway you more towards the SIG. However, as a whole, optic alone, I have to give it to the Nova. The illumination is better. The reticle, in my opinion, but this is my opinion, is better. Image-wise, though, it's splitting hairs, but there's a little bit more chromatic aberration that you do see with the SIG as opposed to the Nova. As far as everything else, it's going to come down to you and what your personal needs are. If you need a mount, if you like the reticle option more, if you don't care about the illumination, if you don't care about things like the nicer turrets or even the slightly nicer feel with the primary arms optic, then the SIG Tango MSR might be for you. However, if those things do matter, then go with the Nova. Or, if you're unsure, literally flip a coin. Price point, they're going to be about the same, so it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Our next comparison is going to be quite similar to our first one. It's going to be the Gen 2 Strike Eagle 1 to 6 and second focal plane. Honestly, this thing performs extremely similar to the SIG, so we're going to have about the same performance. Yes? Well, to a fault. I say to a fault because the price on these Vortex Strike Eagles have really gone up over the years. And I mean, $400 without a mount. I kind of messed up when I was filming with the Strike Eagle, which is why it's not 100% consistent with what we see here with the Nova, so take it for what it's worth. 
but focusing in on our 100 yard paper targets with the 180 yard berm again much of it's going to come down to what your personal tastes and preferences are mostly with the reticle see for myself I much prefer the Nova because it's a little bit simpler, it's a little bit neater, it's a little bit sharper to my eye, easier for me to pick up, and the illumination is much better, so I'm instantly going to go towards that. But if you prefer the reticle that the Strike Eagle has, then, well, that's going to be better for you. Image quality-wise, I'm going to have to give it to the Nova again. It just seems a little bit sharper to my eye, and the colors are a little bit nicer. Not to discredit the Strike Eagle too much, because it is a vast improvement over the Gen 1 and is still pretty good by itself, but we have a larger view looking through the Nova, and we see a little bit less scope body. All of the physical controls, however, are going to be better with the SLX Nova. The Strike Eagle still feels like it's a $250 scope, but yet these things are now going for around $400, and not necessarily all the time with a mount. So guess what? The Strike Eagle might be more expensive than the Nova for most of the time. I say most of the time because every once in a while they will pop up on sale with a mount for low to mid 300s, which again puts it right in line with the SIG as a direct competitor and the SLX Nova trailing a little bit behind. Next up is going to be the PST Gen 2. In my eyes, this is still one of the best second focal plane LPVOs on the market. The only thing that really holds it back from being better is its weight. It is chunky. It's about four ounces heavier than what you see here with the Nova. And that's the difference of like half a mount. You do notice it when you get it in hand. Another thing is, it sometimes doesn't come with a throw lever. So that's another added expense. So these PSTs pop up on sale for about $500 with a cantilever mount, but sometimes no throw lever. But yet, again, the Nova is starting brand new for $340 with a throw lever, but no mount. So honestly, these two are pretty similar price point as is right now. I'm sure the Delta will become a little bit bigger in time. But for right now, honestly, these two are much closer in price point than one might think. Image quality wise... Here at 100 and 180 yards, they're both very, very similar. Same thing out at 200. You might prefer a little bit more brightness to the image with the Nova, but I might prefer a little bit more of the overall sharpness with the PST. It just seems a little bit sharper to my eye, especially when you get behind it. The illumination, though, again, goes 100% to the Nova. The PST is still good, but it's just not as good. However, this is an old optic. This was Kyle's. He had it for about three years and beat the ever-loving shit out of it. So maybe the emitter is just a little bit weak and the Nova is a little bit better. Hard to say. Another thing that's hard to say is, will the Nova hold up to use, wear, and tear, and abuse over time? Whereas the PST is proven to hold up. This has been on his rifle for three years. He ran it last year's Woodland Brutality. It saw some scuffs there, and it's still going very strong. So between these two, I'd say flip a coin, ladies and gentlemen. But for me, it's going to the PST, but only by a minor margin. Last up is going to be the Credo HX 1-6. This is out of its price point by about twice the price, I would say. And this is actually what Kyle got on my recommendation to replace his PST with. One thing you will notice off the bat is the view through the Credo is a little bit smaller than it is with the Nova and thus even smaller than with the PST. But the illumination is much more on par with what we see with the Nova, despite the fact that when we have filmed with the Credo, it is a little bit darker. I will say that the Nova still has a little bit brighter illumination and the image here might look like it favors the Nova over the Credo, but the Credo was filmed in lower light environments and filmed quite some time ago. I have improved my abilities a little bit, but I can and will say that my experience behind the Credo is probably one of the best when it comes to getting behind an LPVO. I thoroughly enjoyed it to the point I almost didn't send it back. The reason why you go with the Credo or you go with the Sig Tango 6T or you go with the Delta Striker is to have that next level feel, fit, and finish. They really do feel like a $700, $800 optic, whereas the Nova still feels like a three dollars to $400 optic. Despite the fact that all the controls are very good with this Nova, they're just that much better when it comes to something like the Credo HX. And I had just mentioned it, but my experience with the Credo was something that I still think about regularly. My experience with the Nova is still impressive, but not as much. But is the Credo 
twice as much of an experience as the Nova? That one is really hard to say. So let's see if we can figure that out together and get into my final thoughts. I compared this SLX Nova to the PST not once, but twice, and for very good reason. When I got my hands on the Nova, the first thing I thought was, is this good enough to dethrone the PST Gen 2 as the best overall quote-unquote budget LPVO? For $500, you could find the PST Gen 2 with a cantilever mount on a fairly good sale. Its regular price is a little bit more than that, but it's still well within arm's reach for many of you out there that are looking to invest in a good quality LPVO that doesn't break the bank. We've seen an uproar of lower end LPVOs that really do bring a lot more performance to the table than their earlier generations did, most notably the Strike Eagle. But in my opinion, the Strike Eagle Gen 2 still falls short of what the PST's capabilities and overall performances are. This SLX Nova bridges that gap even closer. As it turns out, the Nova and the PST Gen 2 are very close competitors to one another, but not just in the performance aspect, but also the price aspect as well, at least they are right now. The PST could be had for 500 bucks with a mount, we already know that. This SLX Nova is going to be available for $340 without a mount, but that price is regular price. So if you were to buy the same Vortex cantilever mount for about $80 to $100 or so, that really puts their price point within spitting distance of one another, which makes that basically a moot point. So it comes down ultimately to the performance. This SLX Nova performs in every way, shape, and form excellent for its price point, if not even more so. It punches above its weight. The one negative that this SLX Nova has is the off-center sharpness, but that is the only negative it has. The PST Gen 2, the only negative it has is its weight. It is heavy. Four-ish ounces compared side by side is like half a mount, which is a lot. But the PST has a proven track record of being very robust. This PST from Kyle, he's had for three years and beat the ever-loving shit out of it, and it's got the scars to prove it. It even served through last year's Woodland Brutality match and came out in perfect working order. And the good thing is, if either of these do have problems, Primary Arms or Vortex has your back. So to answer the question, does this dethrone the PST Gen 2 as the best budget option for the price point? I'm going to say it's really close. But for me personally, I would suck up the extra weight and go with the PST Gen 2. It's a better experience getting behind as opposed to the Nova. If you're on a bench and you have a perfect cheek weld, then... Uh, they can go back and forth all day long and you can nitpick I like this I like that I like that I like this between the two but for me getting behind it and running it the PST Gen 2 is a better experience and that's something that I've brought up a lot throughout this video that word has been used quite significantly because the experience that the Nova has for me to get behind it and run it isn't as good and that's the biggest thing if you want to have the ability to run your optic in a dynamic role, the PST is for you, if you don't mind the weight. If you are going to be shooting mostly off of a bench, go with the Nova. Or if you don't mind it being not as sharp off-center, the Nova is a stellar optic. Ultimately, between those two, you're not going to really get a bad answer. It all comes down to your personal choices. However, I will say this and end the video on it. If you are on the fence about buying this Nova, just take the plunge. As long as you don't mind that it's made in China and you can afford it and you think that's going to suit your roles perfectly fine, it is an excellent optic in my findings so far. The biggest question would be longevity, but at least with primary arms, you know that they're going to replace it and help you out. No questions asked for as long as you own the optic. So at least you have that cushion there. Yes, I would take the PST Gen 2 for me. But truth be told, I am utterly blown away by what Primary Arms is able to bring to the table for as little money as this thing is. $340 to have the controls that it has, the feel that it has, the glass, the illumination, the reticle. They are on such a warpath with creating great optics that fit the roles of many people that it's, it's, it's truly wonderful to be part of. For me to have... The CEO of Primary Arms, Marshall, reach out to me and say, I want you to review this. What do you want to review? I want your input on this. 
it is truly humbling and appreciative. This is an excellent step in the right direction, and I cannot wait to see what their next generation GLX and PLX stuff is going to be like. Because if it's anything like this, then it's going to be incredibly special. As much as I need to thank Marshall and ladies and gentlemen over at Primary Arms, I really need to thank all of you, my viewers. If it wasn't for all of you liking, sharing, subscribing to my channel, I wouldn't have the opportunity to have companies like Primary Arms reach out to me and want me to review their stuff. So, thank you all so very, very much. And as always, I hope to see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you could still help by using my affiliate links in the description below, and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.